Hi friends, hope you are all doing fine. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today we are going to take a trip to Canada and we are going to talk about the Banting Postdoctoral Fellowship. Now essentially this is a very famous and pretty lucrative fellowship. It pays you about 70,000 Canadian dollars per year. Now this fellowship is given for a two-year term and essentially this is a non renewable term so essentially you are expected to do this fellowship for two years and then do something else now the deadline is september of each year so keep that in mind now let's look at the objectives of this fellowship essentially one of the objectives is to attract and retain top postdoctoral talent in canada so this talent is essentially from around the world as well as from Canada itself. So I'm going to discuss some of the things about this fellowship which are valid for Canadian PR and citizens and also for foreign citizens with respect to Canada. The next aim is to develop their leadership potential. So one of the aims of this postdoc is not just that you come and do research in whatever area you have proposed your problem, but also become a leader in your field and number three also ties in with this particular leadership type of aim it is that position you for success as a research leader of tomorrow so certainly the fellowship tries to recruit the best talents in the field and then groom them provide them with a suitable atmosphere within a university setting such that they become the good or great researchers for future so the requirements here are that you have a PhD degree or an equivalent of a PhD degree and also because this fellowship is open for health sciences and medical type of professions you can also have a health equivalent of a PhD. So 70 fellowships are awarded per year so that's a pretty large number at any time there are 140 Banting fellows who are essentially working in Canada. Now remember since this fellowship is given for a two year period there are going to be 17 to 2 that is 140 Banting fellows at any given time. Now there are three areas where you can get this fellowship the number one is health research the number two is natural sciences and engineering and number three is social sciences and humanities. So this is a question I often get in my channel is that how come there are fellowships which are not open to social science or something like that. So actually many fellowships are open to social science and humanities and I will go further and say that most of the named fellowships are actually more open to social sciences and humanities than they are to the engineering and natural science disciplines. So keep that in mind. Now for the health research part all these fellowships are essentially part of the Canadian Institute of Health Research and this is a set of institutes there are essentially 13 such institutes and their aim is to discover and improve health and strengthen the quality of life and health care of people in Canada. Now the next one is the national or the natural science and engineering one and this is essentially coming from the national science and engineering research council. So this is the body which essentially is responsible for science and engineering research in Canada. And finally, the third one, the social sciences and humanities component that is coming from the social science and humanities research council. So these are all bodies in Canada, which are essentially mandated with improving the research in these areas. And they are responsible for some of the planning, selection, recruitment, and so on. Now let's look at who all can apply for the Banting Postdoctoral Fellowship. Now the number one of course are Canadian citizens and Canadian permanent residents. So these are the people who can apply and of course also foreign citizens can apply. So this is a very interesting and open part about this fellowship that it is actually open to all type of people. Now what these people can do is actually slightly different based on their visa status or whether they are citizens of Canada or not. So let's look at all these different people. Now if you are not Canadian or PR, okay, then you can only work at a Canadian university or a Canadian establishment. So the, essentially what this means is that if you are a foreign person who is not a PR of Canada, then you have to work in Canada. So of course that's something which you are planning to do in the Banting Fellowship, so that's not an issue. Now the second fact is that if you are a Canadian citizen or PR, 
but you have done a PhD from a foreign country, then you again have to work in a Canadian institution. So essentially, any of these people, many times they go to US and do a PhD. And therefore, what these guys can do is they can go back to Canada and essentially they can do the banting postdoc there. So this is a very good option for any Canadian citizen or PR who has gone off to US or UK or France to do their PhD degree. Now, the third part is Canadian citizens and PR who have actually done their PhD in Canada. Now, these people have two options. They can either do this banting postdoc in Canada or they can go to a foreign country and do the banting postdoc. So this is a very interesting thing because essentially they are outplacing you here to a foreign country because their thinking could be that, okay, you have done your PhD from Canada. Maybe you want some foreign exposure. Maybe you want to go to a US university and do your postdoc there so you can avail of the banting postdoc there also. So these are certain things to keep in mind. And now let's see what are the institutions where you can apply. You can apply to Canadian universities, of course, various research institutes, colleges, nonprofits with strong research centers and PhD and postdoc type of culture. Because naturally, since you are going for a postdoc, you want to apply to a university which has a PhD type of program because you are now a postdoc and certainly you don't want to go to a college at this point, which has a four year degree program only. So keep that in mind. Now, for profit institutions are not open as far as this fellowship is concerned. So this is often the case that government sponsored fellowships do not encourage for profit institutions. They encourage you go to other government bodies and so on. Now, let's look at some of the things you need to do to apply for this fellowship. So essentially, first thing is, of course, you need to find a university and find a supervisor. So, of course, the algorithm here is that you need to conduct a good literature survey, find the people who are in your field in Canada, and then ask some of these people, maybe send emails to them that you want to work with them for this Banting Fellow program. You need to write a research proposal. You need to have a good CV. You need to have a few publications. You need to have three references. And one of the interesting things which is mentioned here is that in the publications, they are not so much impressed or interested by the impact factor of the journals where you have published. Remember, impact factor is a measure of where the work is being cited more. So some people get too carried away by impact factor and they get obsessed by it. So here they are more concerned about the quality of the paper. So they actually do go and read your papers and they try to see if the journals are actually the established journals in the field rather than necessarily the high impact factor journal. Now, in many cases, the high impact factor journals are actually not necessarily the established journals in the field. So it may happen because many fields, the established journals actually are in very na narrow areas. So let's say the Journal of Fluid Mechanics is there. Now, there are not a lot, not a lot of people who are working in fluid mechanics and some of the basic aspects of it. So there are not too many citations coming out of these papers. But what happens is that because there are not too many citations, the impact factor may not be so high as in some material science journal or something like that. So that's not an issue. And you need to keep in mind that the field is more important. The field where you're in, the top journals in that field are more important. Now, interestingly about the research proposal, they say that the research proposal should be four page in long if it is in the, in the English language and five page long if it's in the French language. So they have done some study where they have found that French actually requires more space to communicate the same idea. So in fact, French requires 20% more space. So this is something which I learned by producing things about this Banting Fellowship. So again, so if you are one of the French speaking type people who want to go to the Quebec province or somewhere like that, then you may be writing your proposal in French and so on. So remember that Canada is actually a bilingual country. They have English and they have French. So a lot of the people around the world who are in the Francophone type of countries, they can actually consider applying to this fellowship also because they can do everything in French here. So many of the countries in North Africa and France are part of the system so they can take advantage of this. So this was my take on the Banting Fellowship. It's a very useful fellowship. You are close to the top universities in the world and you can take advantage of various conferences in US also if you are in Canada. 
so i would certainly suggest that you take advantage of this fellowship you build up a good cv remember that this fellowship they're not obsessed with numbers or impact factor they just want a few good papers in good journals and they would like to have you submit a good research proposal and again get some good references so that was my take on the banting fellowship and i hope to see you in a video sometime soon see you then